the, the gospel today speaks about the, a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. And of course, in the gospel, Christ is speaking about the kingdom of Satan. But we can also apply this positively. The kingdom of God, the kingdom that is growing within us, if it is divided against itself, will not stand. And so this gospel is a call to that process of continuous conversion, that Lenten process of making sure that this kingdom of grace, the kingdom of God within us, triumphs in our lives, triumphs over the old man, triumphs over temptations, triumphs over our sins. And that is something we celebrate and we live out in Lent in a particular way, but in a certain sense, it is the entire journey of Christian life. This transformation into Christians in the full sense of the word, this transformation into Christ. Now that's all very easy and simple to say. The question is, how do we do that, right? How does that happen? And I think, Perhaps one of the great temptations in Christian life, especially for those who are starting out, I was an novice here, uh, and you think about your own life, Christian life, and then religious life, and then priestly life. I think one of the great temptations is to think that everything depends on me. Now, of course, we won't say it that way, but we act as if everything depends on me or almost everything depends on me. And I need to do this, and I need to do these sacrifices, and I need to be faithful, and I need to follow the rules, and I need to, and I need to, and I need to. We're here before the great mystery of the combination of grace, God's freedom, God's action, and our freedom, human responsibility, and how do you combine these two? And throughout history, this is the great theological field that is littered with heresies, right? Because it's not, it, it, it's not easy to combine these two. And there is no great theological or dogmatic response to how to combine the two. And so, I will tell you a story. I know that you are in classes with Father Patrick, it was a lot story and so inspired by his example, I will tell you a story. I met a priest once who had worked many years in Lebanon and he told us this story, he told me this story. Lebanon, as you know, was a country that, was, um, that suffered a civil war for many years. And he was in his parish one day and someone knocked at the door, he opened the door, there was this elderly, middle-aged to elderly lady, uh, and she said, Father, please go to this house, and she handed him a paper with an address, and she said, please go here, because someone is dying, and he needs last rites. And so the father took his bicycle and went to the place. It was an apartment building, and the apartment number was also uh, listed on, on that piece of paper she gave him. And so he knocked on the door, and this fairly young man in his perhaps late 20s opened up and said, yes, Father, can I help you? I heard that someone is dying. He said, no, I live alone here. There is one who's dying. And so he said, well, this lady came to me, and here's the paper. He said, well, maybe she got the apartment number mixed up. So he said, I'll help you. And they went together knocking on every door in the apartment building. And they couldn't find anyone who was dying. Everyone, no, no one's here. And So then the man said, Father, why don't you come in, have a cup of tea, uh, or... You know, a cup of tea and, and, you know, just rest after about half an hour knocking on people's doors. And obviously the lady got not the apartment number mixed up, but maybe the, the, the number of the building, but there are just too many buildings. We can't go knocking on every door in the whole complex. So they're having tea. They start talking, and the man starts to tell father a little bit about his life. And he says, I'm Catholic, and my mother was very uh, pious, and she always took me to church. But then she died several years ago, and I've sort of, sort of fallen away from the faith. And he started telling the priest his life story. And the priest listens, and at the end he says, look, now you've told me 
your story. Why don't you tell it to God? Would you like to have confession? And so the man says, yes, confession, absolution. The priest is leaving, stay in touch, come and help out in the parish, begin your Christian life again, etc., etc. He leaves, he leaves the building, back on his bicycle, going back towards the parish, and the sirens sound for a bombing raid. And so he ducks into one of the closer buildings, goes down into the basement, there is the bombing, he comes out, and the building that he had been in had been bombed. And he goes with other people to try and find survivors, and they find the body of this young man who he had just been with, who had died in the bombing raid. And around this man's neck was a, was a chain with a locket, and the priest opens the locket, and it was written there, my dearest mother, and the picture of the lady who had come to the priest in the parish and knocked. What does this mean? This means that this lady, either in purgatory or in heaven, was praying for her son and God knowing that it was the moment of death for this boy, allowed the mother to go and knock on the door and send the priest. Why is this a good story for Christian life? God does almost everything. The protagonist is God. And God will move heaven and earth. And he will send the dead if he needs to. And he came in flesh and he died. And he continues to act in history, in the church, in the life of each one of us to bring us to the fullness of grace. He will do almost everything. All we need to do is to say yes. All we need to do is to accept the offer of grace. All we need to do is to collaborate. The man had to say yes to the offer of confession. And there is a third story over here, or a third lesson, which is the power of intercession this woman praying for her son, like Monica praying for Augustine. Our Christian life is not just about building up the kingdom of God within us. It is about building up the kingdom of God in my brother. And by extension in the whole world, in the whole church, and then the whole world. Let us in this Lenten journey, and especially in this Eucharist, Today, when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, open ourselves up to grace. Say yes. Pray for my brother. Pray for his journey. Pray for the church. Pray for the world. The Eucharist is the center of space and time. It is the center of history and the universe. And on this altar, every day, the salvation of the world is played out. And we are active participants in that mystery. Let us, as we journey this Lent towards that full transformation in Christ, that is the fullness of our Christian life, open ourselves up every day more to the offer of grace that the Lord is continuously giving us.